Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and this is a new weekly reading vlog. As I record this, it is Monday the 13th of September and shortly we're off in the car and we're going to go out to the deepest, darkest wilds of Wi-Fi free Wales. Not the whole of Wales is Wi-Fi free but this bit of it is before that rumour starts. And to Riagoch which uh, I went to and absolutely loved earlier this year. It was a proper retreat. And then on Friday we're off to another part of Wales uh, to Harden where I have curated and we'll be hosting a series of literary events at Autumn's Camp Good Life. I always want to say Autumn Summer Camp Good Life, it's not right. Autumn Camp Good Life. Also, I'll be judging some dog shows, which I might tease you with now, but actually pop in the next reading vlog. So, I am putting Bacopathon on hold and any work really on hold and everything, because it is a holiday. So that means Ariadne, which I didn't read last week and was the last roll of my dice on the Bacopoli board, um, I will hold that until I am back next week. Tuesday or Monday. Um, anyway, what I am taking now is a series of delightful uh, books that I have been meaning to read for ages. The first of which is Sarah Moss's The Fowl. I absolutely love Summer Water and read it in Rio Goch where we're going. So it's nice to have that as uh, another treat to read because yeah, I think I'm going to really, really, really love this in, in that surrounding too. Then the first of some non-fiction, My Mess is a Bit of a Life by Georgia Pritchett, which um, the lovely Louise gave me uh, from Faber when she came round and um, I read little bits of it and just started laughing. It's all in vignettes, it's all little moments of George's life. Can't wait to get to that. Another memoir that actually Louise gave me as well is Dear Sinteran by Akweki Ameze, a black spirit memoir. I've been meaning to read this for ages. This is the proof edition. In fact, these are all proof editions and so is the next book, but I've been meaning to read this for absolutely ages and can't wait to get to it. Same with Fault Lies by Fault Lines by Emily Itami. Loads of people People I know and trust have really, really loved this. Notice they're all quite short and sharp. Then we have A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins. Again, love Paula Hawkins writing, but mean to read this for ages, haven't got around to it, I'm going to. And last but not least, a book that I bought for myself only the other day for this holiday, and it's How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. Um, and I'm really, really intrigued for this one. So yeah, a few crime books, some non-fiction and some literary fiction, all books I've been super excited to read, either for a while or just recently. I have to say, the Bella Mackey is a very recent, oh, I must read that, I don't know where it's come from, but yeah, there we go. So I need to get in the car, off we go, Wales, here we come. Morning everyone, it is Tuesday the 14th of September, as you can see, in the tent in Rio Goch. Um, had a lovely night last night, Mike and Preg's had us around for dinner, which was really lovely, so we got here later than anticipated um, because I had to do some stuff for Sky. Had a really, really, really lovely dinner with them. And I forgot to say yesterday, the books that I've picked to read are books that I kind of predict to be five stars they're the ones that i'm sort of most excited about and sarah moss's the fell is the one that i've started first because i read summer water here earlier in the year and it was just a joy to read her books about nature and versus human nature i guess in the wilderness so i picked this one up but the reason i thought i'd tell you each time why i think it's going to be five star and i think that's because um i found in the last sarah moss that i read she gets into the heads of characters so brilliantly that I was just transfixed by it. And there's also always this kind of slight um, atmosphere of danger or terror involved or sort of brooding atmosphere that creeps up on you. I found that in Ghost Wall as well. And that's already happening in this. So this is set, this is a proof edition, sorry, it's not showing up very well. Um, this is set in the Peak District, which is where I'm from. And it's about um, a woman called Kate who is meant to be self-isolating along with her son and she um, decides that she just needs to go for a walk, she's had enough, and so she goes out onto the fells and has an accident, and we then follow the narrative for her, the narrative for her son, the narrative for her neighbour Alice, who has had cancer and also has been widowed and um, has been staying in her house, and also uh, the man who is on the mission to try and find Kate. Um, he's part of the sort of rock climbing um, rescue service, if you know what I mean. So that's where we are, and so far I am blinking 
loving it. So this could be a very good five star prediction. That's where we are today. We're not going to do very much, just going to pot around. We need to probably go to McCunclis to go and get some um, groceries and stuff and probably lunch out. And uh, other than that, we're just going to be staying here and chilling. That's the idea. So I shall report back on this later. Although I feel like this is going to be one of those books where I could devour it really, really quickly. But I'm not going to want it because I just love the writing so much. Down, 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 and get it. Hi everyone, it's later on on Tuesday, I'm wearing my go away. I'm reading top and I thought with that perfect backdrop, I would tell you more about the fell, which I am about two thirds of the way through. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it tonight because we're off out for dinner back in McCunclith in um, number 21, which is one of our favorite restaurants now. I'm so excited about what food I'm gonna have, can't wait. Anyway, um, this is proving to be like right up my street. I think Sarah Moss is firmly becoming a new favorite author. And I don't know why I haven't read some of her previous stuff. I did say I was gonna read it over the summer after reading some water, didn't happen, but I would like to head back to more of it. So like I said, this is all about um, Kate who has gone out she's meant to be self-isolating so the book is very 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 like current about covid and everything and um there's loads of discussion around that and i didn't think i was ready for a covid book but sarah moss kind of does it in such a brilliant way i'm kind of hooked but also she's encompassing lots of different thoughts about like well lots of people's different perspectives on covid and isolating and following the rules and breaking the rules and all of that and that i think is really really well done but i think she has come up with once again, genius characters. There's a lot less characters. It's really kind of almost Rob, who is who is looking for her, is kind of, he doesn't appear. He appears at the very beginning and then again at the middle. Um, and he's got a really interesting look at life as a single parent and what it's like to go and do these rescue missions and what's happened when he's seen people die. There's quite a lot of talk about grief and death in this book, but I think that's natural with the year that we've had, I guess. Um, so there's that element, but Alice, I think, is genius. Alice is this amazing character who lives next door. She's a concerned neighbour, not a nosy neighbour. There's a lot about like people shopping their neighbours to the police when they break rules and stuff. Um, she's got a really interesting relationship with her family, who are quite distant, but even more distant now because of obviously everything going on with COVID. And then you've got Kate, who is clearly having a really difficult time with her mental health and self-isolation and shielding hasn't well self-isolation hasn't it's Alice the shielding hasn't helped with that and the, the way that that's looked at I thought was really interesting I know with me with shielding I found that very difficult on my mental health and I think it's written brilliantly in here and then Matt as a teenager who's really caring but kind of at a loss and doesn't quite know what to do and he's also kind of a hope because I think teenagers get a real rough ride but he's been written really I just think it's brilliant and there are just little moments like with um Summer Water where you just think what a genius writer like Alice has been talking about how she would much rather have a um electric blanket in her life than a man because you're still warm but you don't have to deal with the farts or the snoring and there's just little moments like that that I think are brilliant or she talks about how what she would look what she wouldn't look for in a husband if she ever got married again. It's also very much about ageing, um, health, grief, everything. It's just brill. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get it finished, like I said, tonight. But um, we shall see. And if not, I shall report back in the morning after I've been out some amazing grub at number 21. Morning everyone from the tent. It is Wednesday the 15th of September and I have finished The Fell 
by Sarah Moss and I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. I don't want to give anything away other than I'll say I tubbed it like a lot. I do this with proofs, I don't do it with finished books. I just really loved it. There's so many astute observations of people and human nature from the last year, but also so much hope about people, which I think is really good, whilst also having a really tense storyline about Kate going missing um, and this sort of brooding, ominous nature to it, which, yeah, um, I shall say no more because I don't want to spoil it, but I will say go and get it when it's out in November because it's bloody brilliant. Um, next, I'm going to head to... My Mess is a Bit of a Life by Georgia Pritchett, who writes for shows like Miranda. I really like Miranda. It's very much on my sense of humour. And the reason I think it's going to be five star for me is it looks at anxiety, which is something that I get. Um, my anxiety becomes paranoia, which is quite odd. So it'll be interesting to see what Georgia's uh, anxiety is like and how she has dealt with it. So she's now become a really, really successful screenwriter um, and can meet, like, she writes amazing comedy sketches. She writes on Succession now. Um, so, yeah, and Veep, I think she worked on. I think she wrote a, a piece for, like, Obama for his birthday or something. Anyway, I'm really intrigued for this, but also when um, Louisa, my friend who works at Faber, she came round and said, you would really, really like this, it's very much your sense of humour. I opened it, and first it was in vignettes, which I love, and secondly, I read just some small snippets and was in hysterics. I'm really looking forward to this. I could do with a fun read, especially after some quite bleak peak district, bleak, bleak peak district. Imagine that's a whole new genre. I'm gonna get up, have some breakfast, and then today it's gonna be another very lazy day. And all I think we're gonna do is probably, we need, we, loads of shops are closed in McConkles, including the deli and a few charity shops. So we're gonna head back and go to those and see what trinkets we can find and then come back and just spend, it's meant to be, it's really grey and dismal now, but it's meant to be lovely later. So we wanna spend the day by the pool. It's not a photo. Oh. Sheep in the road, sheep in the road, sheep in the road. So we are back from McConcliffe and as you'll have seen, we've seen the most amazing thing. We were driving along and suddenly there were just all these birds in the sky and I thought they were ravens and Chris was like, I think they're kites. I was like, no, you can't get that many kites. Kites are kind of still quite endangered in the UK. They're almost extinct at one point, but one of my favourite birds as a kid um, and one of the reasons that I would love to do falconry, um, apart from, oh, this is a bit of a wasp situation, the fact that one of my old neighbours who used to own the zoo, when they sold it, they took Mr. Christoph the golden eagle with them. Anyway, I used to go and feed him and go in his huge, huge, huge cage. Anyway, enough of that. We saw all those kites and it was honestly amazing because one, they're really rare, two, they were so happy, and three, this lovely old man is feeding them every other day. And um, he had a really nice chat with us about it. And I thought, what a lovely man. And just lovely to stand and have a chat and watch them just going bonkers. Anyway, book stuff. I'm about 90 pages into my mess is a bit of a life and I'm really 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 enjoying it. It is all about as I said George's life, it's told in vignettes, I can show you them. 
because some of them are very short, like cake. I picked a good uh, one there, or you've got a slightly longer staying on the pavement. And so far I've been reading all about her childhood and how, um, and sort of going into adulthood and working out what she wants to do and how she's a bit different as a kid and um, just getting to sort of hear her viewpoint on life is really, really lovely and seeing where all of like her humour comes from and it's all very um, self-deprecating, which I quite enjoy. I don't know how it's gonna pan out. I know obviously she becomes a TV, um, oh, sorry, a writer for TV. Um, I think she's won like awards and stuff, but um, yeah, we shall see as we carry on. I shall report back in due course. We're off out shortly because we're off to a restaurant called Proper Gander for some tea. So uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you after that or tomorrow. Morning everyone, it is Thursday the 16th of September and dinner last night was lovely in propaganda. Slightly sort of Faulty Towers-esque in a way, <laughs> but really, really good food. We had a really, really nice time. We also really liked the village or town that it was in. I want to say it was called Twin, but I think that's wrong. It was um, beautiful, we went by the sea and it was one of my favourite beaches because it was sandy and pebbly but so clean and apparently they have dolphins and porpoises there at some points in the year so I can't, I would, I, well I can't speak, I'd quite like to go back there and so yeah that was a really really lovely evening. I also so far this morning because uh, you might be able to hear Chris is in the shower, um, we're off out in a bit but um, I have finished My Mess is a Bit of a Life which was a very very speedy read but an incredibly moving one this book is about so much and i cannot recommend enough complete five stars like sarah moss was and um, but i think because it's written in these vignettes you get through it a lot quicker but also you just want to read more of george's writing about her life and sort of what she's been through so without giving too much away because i want you all to go and read it um as I mentioned, she talks about her childhood and how she gets into TV sort of a bit accidentally and then how she, um, from there we kind of learn how she gets to know like Ronnie Corbett and starts writing for him and various other stuff. She worked on Spitting Image, which I don't know if in America you'll have had, but in the UK you'll know it. And she also then started to write more like Smack the Pony, which is one of my favourite TV shows. But also it's about how um, sort of the men she dated and how that went. Then she writes about how she met the one and the one happened to be a woman. Um, and then talks about how she wanted to become a mother and how that went um, and having, she, she has miscarriages um, and also has children and motherhood isn't quite what she expects for lots of different reasons it's quite challenging and um, both of her children are autistic and I won't say any more than that because I feel like I've given quite a lot away other than you need to read it because it's one of those books that celebrates the ordinary and makes it extraordinary but also looks at the extraordinary and how you combat that and how Again, it's a book that's kind of got some really dark bits. There's some really dark stuff around what it's like to be a woman in TV, the Me Too movement, also um, about the racism in telly. There's so much in it, and I want everyone out there to go and read it. I'd quite like to listen to it again as an audiobook if she reads it. Um, but I know also I want George Pritchett to be my new best friend, which I don't think can be a uh, higher acclaim for a book. So that's that, we're off to Barmouth. It's a bit grey, I don't know if you can see today, but it's meant to be lovely there. And uh, gonna go and finally, we were going to go to Barmouth earlier this week, but I really want to eat at a place called the Celtic Cabin that does Mexican food. And I will, you know, avail I'm available to hire for food, but also will travel for food. And this is something that I really want to travel to. So as soon as Chris is ready, we're off.
Hi everyone, we are back from our day out in Bournemouth. I keep saying Bournemouth. Bournemouth would be a very long detour to go to from here. Anyway, we've been to Barmouth and it was beautiful. And what was lovely was it was quite um, cloudy and foggy and misty on the way. It's quite eerie. And then suddenly we turned the corner not far away from Barmouth and it just went to absolute sunshine and stayed that way. So that was lovely. Potted around the shops. It's my kind of town because, seaside town, because it's kind of got that faded glamour, but it's still got kind of the tacky uh, funfair amusement art arcades all that kind of stuff but also a real buzz of indie and kind of upcoming places really really lovely including the um celtic cabin which i've been wanting to go and eat at ever since i heard about it earlier this week and it was amazing it's literally a cabin a bit of the promenade with a few benches around it that does the most incredible tostadas i've had you'll have seen them they were delicious absolutely delicious i would go back just for that frankly but also it was lovely and then on the way back we went via um dog i want to say I hope I've said that right. And that was another beautiful town as you'll have seen with like this amazing gray uh, stone, a real market town, loads of lovely coffee shops, charity shops, um, loads of Indies, a really nice butcher where we've got the meat for our barbecue tonight. It's so gonna be doing that shortly. And uh, yeah, just a really, really lovely day. Again, I fall in love more and more with North Wales the more time I spend here. Now, I thought before I go and have a shower, get changed, start a fire. I like starting a fire that sounds wrong but yeah I just I really like fires anyway um I thought I'd tell you about the next book that I'm planning on reading which I might get to before the barbecue starts and that is Fault Lines by Emily Itami and the reason I think this is going to be a five-star read for me is that I absolutely love the editor of this book in fact uh, Francesca Mangie's called has been given her an imprint called Phoenix and I'm going to read everything on it um because yeah she has edited authors like Jesse Burton and she has edited um, Ben Whitehouse, who I really, really love. David Whitehouse, who I really, really love. I forgot the name right. And yeah, I just really, really like the authors that she edits. So I'm really excited for this debut, which I think is going to give a bit of a different insight into, I want to say Tokyo, or is it Hong Kong? I'll let you know when I start reading it, which I'm hoping to do after I've had a shower, got changed and sorted the fire out. Maybe we'll find out what Chris is reading because we haven't featured Chris and what he's reading on this holiday yet. What are you reading, Chris? I'm reading Elizabeth David's Italian Food. Every time you say Elizabeth David, I think you're going to say Elizabeth Day. Elizabeth Day. Food. Um, and what's it about and how are you finding it? First published in 1954, a lot of it is quite dated, but this version is from 1987. So things like basil and mozzarella are now available. I'm enjoying it. It's a nice introduction. And I'm imagining my grandmother reading it and thinking, ooh, that sounds new. We used to get olive oil just in pharmacists to put in your ears. And now they're putting it on salads. It's a whole new world. Morning everyone, it is Friday the 17th, I think, of September and um, the barbecue last night was really, really lovely. I didn't get any footage of it because I was too busy gassing and chatting. I have discovered that Preds has another property on the big hill over the other way um, that sleeps eight, I think, and I really want to go and do like a little group retreat there we've decided anyway lovely 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 barbecue i think my fire was outstanding um i have started this morning after a little visit from flosses you'll have seen uh, fault lines by emily itami i sort of started like the first chapter last night but i reread it again this morning um post uh, barbecue delight and meat coma it's really interesting so it's told from a, a housewife in tokyo it's told from the narrator is a housewife from tokyo and she's sort of almost like setting her stall at the fact that she's ha had an affair. We're only getting like a little glimpse into it. And it's basically her saying that she had a pact with herself that 
she would do one really bad outrageous thing and then she would go back to being good and I love that as an idea of a premise but also she then tells us some slightly darker things that goes on and I'm only on chapter four um of how she tried to throw herself off a balcony once while her husband was just on his phone checking his emails and it's it's this kind of dark bleak humor but very much my cup of tea so so far very good I shall carry on reading it when we get to um, Gladstone Library later, which is the next port of call, because sadly we are leaving Rio Goch today. Um, so yeah, I think Chris is gonna have one more swim. He's also got to speak to some BBC producer about a house show that we might do. I don't know anything about it, but hey ho. So that is where we are, but yeah, very, very, very promising so far. And now getting very, very excited for autumn camp good life. Someone is not helping me pack. Are you Floss? Shut the stick. Floss. <gasps> Sit. Good girl. <gasps> Morning everyone, it is Saturday the 18th of September and I'm in Glasson's library. There's book paper on the wall, you can see, or bookish wallpaper even. I haven't actually been into the library yet, so that's why you've not seen any of it, but I'm hoping to go over the next couple of days. Got to site a little bit late yesterday, had to then sort of run to be on stage for my first event, then had a tiny little break and then did my second one and then it was dark, so we just sort of got our bearings at dusk. Um, but it was lovely. I chatted to Xanathy Gladstone and Mark Shaler about the five books that sort of shape their lives. And it's something that I'm thinking about doing as maybe a podcast or something. Anyway, um, so with that, um, but um, the food as always was amazing. We had some great food, amazing chips, and uh, just spent time hanging out with people that I knew and saying hello. And Chris is now currently at home feeding the cats. He's coming back shortly. Then I'm gonna go on site, get some breakfast. And then I have, Judging the Dog Show, which is going to be one of the highlights of my year, and we're doing that tomorrow as well. Uh, I've got an event with Sarah Women, which I can't wait for, and I'm doing an evening of ghost stories with Jane Campbell around a campfire uh, near the castle. So that's all very exciting to come, but that's probably going to come in the next vlog. I think I'm going to wrap off here. And before I do, I thought I would say I have not finished Fault Lines by Emily Itami. I'm actually only about 33, 34 pages in. I'm still really, really enjoying it. I love this like dark sense of humour and dark comedy within it, but also how this woman is kind of unravelling sort of as she tells us what she's done and tries to excuse it in all sorts. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to reading more. And breaking tradition, I normally like to stop a vlog when I've stopped a book. I'm not doing that. I'm going wild, I'm going rogue, I'm gonna stop it right here. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed seeing the retreat and what I've read so far. I'm gonna carry on next week. Sorry, my mom's going to. What I was trying to say was, I'm gonna carry on reading books by whim for a little bit, because it's really, really working for me. So the cops on might be on hold for a couple of weeks, then I might get back to it like the last week of September. We'll see. Well, I've got a lot of work reading to do. Oh, anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments down below if you have, what you'd like to see in future vlogs, anything I'm missing that you'd like to see, any extra insights. Obviously, I've realised that when I'm at a festival and I'm on stage, I can't film. So that was foolish of me to think that I could do a behind the scenes at a festival a video unless I wasn't actually doing anything at the festival. Oops, but maybe another time, we'll see. Who knows what will crop up. But um, yeah, I uh, will see you all in another video very, very soon. I don't know what it's gonna be yet because it's gonna be back when I'm at home and I'll film then. Bye.